How you guys doing? All right. Doing very well. Boy, it's in the air. It is. Look oh, at this. Man. Look at this crowd. Look at this crowd here. We never have a crowd this early. They're getting their this getting their seats this early. I was just over at Circa. I did the uh, walk from there, and uh, it's just like the calm before the storm. Nobody was really in there. When so. Bill when Bill Krakenberger walks from Circa yeah. to the D, how many times do you get stopped? Um, I, I think I stopped once. Once? How'd you know that? On Fremont? Yeah. Right after, right I mean, we saw door. we saw you shaking hands and, and oh. kissing babies kissing here before, babies. Uh, before no. pressing Spot. the flesh. Yeah, Fremont. So a, a guy um, walked out right at the door of the Four Queens. I don't know, like, and he's like, "What? Wait." He goes, "Where are you going?" I said, like, well, "Hi, how are you?" <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Look, at, I mean, nobody's there. No. Uh, yeah. It is oh, a little. Like, it's a little wild at this time. Oh day, yeah, uh, Fremont. This is. This feels great to be alive. It this does. is what it's all about. This is the greatest thing ever. Will, Will and I were talking about this. Uh, the other day, it's like no matter how Will was saying, and I, it wasn't just me. Uh, no matter how old we get, right? So we're all we're all betters, and we tend to, as we get older, even if we weren't betters, right? The older you get, you tend to get more jaded, right? Your your childhood love for teams um, tends to dissipate over time for any number of reasons. But there is something about March Madness, right? Selection Sunday to this morning, the the brackets, Survivor, whatever you're playing. I don't think you ever outgrow this. No, this is, uh, you know, I, I used to come out with my buddies every year back in the 90s, you know, from, from back east. And you come out Wednesday, you, you know, you think, you know, by the, by the way, it was like early 90s, uh, you think you know what you're doing. You got your own teams, and, um, you, but you want to stay at a place, too. Like, I was thinking to myself, we used to go to Bally's for some reason because it was, well, not for some reason. It was the famous Four Corners there was more yeah. sports books there. You had the Bally sports book. You, of course, had Bellagio. You had Caesars. You had um, the Barbary Coast. But behind the Barbary Coast, there was another sports book there, too. Maybe the Maxim had their own. They had a book at the Maxim. But there was the Bourbon Street. There was a place called Bourbon Street. So I have six line sets you can look at in a matter of, you know, 30 minutes, 35 minutes. You can get around. and uh, The corner of the Strip in Paradise. That corner. Yeah. Uh, no, it was actually oh, that no, corner in the Strip. Uh, and the strip and, and, and the flamingo in that corner. Flamingo, not BA. Yeah. Flamingo. And that particular corner right there was, uh, I, I thought it was that you can reach the most books within the shortest amount yeah. of time. Yeah. And it's amazing the differences. This is before the internet. Amazing the differences you would find. Um, but I was, think I was saying it to someone else. Or I was talking about when, you know, we used to come out that time of the year. We used to, like right now, we used to always go to the pool. It was like 10 degrees warmer. Yeah. So I don't know. Something happened well, well, last decade. You and I, we talked about this last, <laughs> last week. week. I yeah. brought it up. But we do get, like if you're in town, that we do get too nice for those who are at the pool. They get nice days today and tomorrow. Then it goes back to being sucky yes. on Saturday. No, no. It's going to be like yeah. 75 today, right? Yeah, yeah, today's nice for them. But, yeah. you know, that's for those who uh, have come into town. And so they, they do get lucky in that regard. Uh, I do have this breaking news report. Are you ready for this from some uh, Steve Fezzik? Oh, yeah. Noted bridge jumper Stephen Fezzik. The only back-to-back winner of the Hilton Super Contest. What's that rascal up to? Uh, <laughs> famously, of course, had Purdue last year against Fairley Dickinson. Um, and, you know, look, we love Steve, but he feels the need to make all this public. And so here we are again. He, so he lost on that. This just in. Breaking news. Fairley Dickinson won as a 16 seed last year, famously, and people went after him. Um, what did he lay? Minus 4,500, I think, last Something year like on that, Purdue. Yeah. I believe that was not. Then just a week or two ago, remember he had Villanova against DePaul, and he needed a three. Three and 29 DePaul. Got home easy, Kel. What are you easy. talking about? Never in doubt. Well, Steve is announcing that he is playing the money line on all four number one seeds, <laughs> respectively. Huh. Now, I don't know his exact numbers, yeah. uh, so I don't want to quote any right now. Um but he is, he is on North Carolina, Purdue, Houston, and UConn the next two days. And again, mathematically speaking, right. let's just see, because Fez was on earlier this week, um, and he was a joy to have on the show. And we talked briefly about this. For those, again, who are new or newish to betting, um, mathematically speaking, by his numbers, right, it's a 99 point whatever chance of those teams winning. On the money line, again, this is not about spreads. He's betting on the money line. He's laying a cartoonish number on it. Um, but value is value. And to someone like him who does th- things through a mathematical lens, if it is perceived as plus EV, which it is to him, um, then 
based on the number he's getting. That's why I don't want to quote, because if I quote something that I'm saying, it doesn't mean that that's what Steve got. And he was very clear of saying, hey, if I'm if I'm going minus forty five hundred on something, don't you go minus seven thousand on it. Right. Or whatever uh, the difference is. So he is getting the best that he can. And then he is doing it now. It's not for everyone, though, as he said, please, you know, bet five dollars on it, whatever you want to do. It's fine. But uh, that's what he's doing. So he will be on all four oh, number one. He's emptying my accounts here. Yes. Like, like, like he's asking me to bet for him because yeah. this is, you know, like, like there. There you go. Yeah. There you go, Gil. It's a live bet for you. That's um, right. There it is. Yeah. And that, so, what, what, let me see. Well, that, that, he doesn't know it yet, but it's thirty okay. $34,125 to win 750 bucks. <laughs> so there, there it is. The bet has been Steve made. Eight. And uh, I just made it right in front of you. That was, that was Purdue, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Purdue. We don't have to say where, but I mean, uh, oh, it's... Great. it's. Uh, you hear Seth Davis last night. He's like, I don't know. Grambling's got the goods to be <laughs> Purdue. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. You got, say, got, could be dicey. Well, I that's... 200000 pending on three games, Steve. Thanks. This yeah. is... Uh, <laughs> So for Steve, that's his that's yeah. his uh, angle on it. Now, yeah. my only thing with him, and as I said it to him when he was here, because he's like, he's like, oh, your head's exploding. Oh, my head's not exploding. I get why you're doing it. I just don't want know why you feel the need to make it in public all the time. I would kind of agree with that. Yeah, yeah I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, but then again, you know, I know it's mathematically yes. right to do. Yeah. But I'm not going to open myself up. I, I don't want to deal with anybody going nuts. And you want to know something. You guys both notice, right? Most people are rooting against them. Oh, well, of you, course. You, 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 oh, you yeah, guys. Yeah, oh, of course. Oh, we talked yeah, about yeah. this the oh, other okay. day. Yeah. They're yeah. running against them. Because uh, I will tell you, during the DePaul Villanova game, as DePaul, <laughs> as, De, as it was going down the wire, I everyone was just rooting against him. And all I did was I was just shaking my head. I was like, oh, please don't lose. I mean, we talked about the please next day. How, how many people texted you during that? Oh, I, I probably God. had four, to, four, five, six different texts. That's the one thing I will say. He completely... Uh, took the attention of all of gambling Twitter with that. <laughs> yeah, like I, I mean, everybody was rooting against him. If, really if I'm did. being honest, I, I mean, I want, I want him to win every single one of Me those too. bets. I kind of hope it's in Philadelphia style, though, so I get like a miniature yeah. oh. sweat on my side. <laughs> 100%. Just to let's let him feel it a little bit and then have him win. It I got to be honest. You know, I, I actually did. I'm, I'm, I, I bet that for him. And uh, yeah. I was one of the bets. He might have had more, but yeah. I, I didn't know that. I, I wasn't watching the game at all. Someone said to me, do you believe this upset happened? They didn't even know I bet it. And I was like, well, what? What upset? <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. I turned it on. It was like, it was literally 57, 55 or something like that. It was oh. whatever it was. It was two points. Vill- and then they had to make the three with 13 Villano- seconds. Villanova hit a three with, with whatever, 15 you know, seconds, like whatever. nine seconds, oh, nine whatever seconds, it was. Yeah. I don't know, but don't hold me to that. But yeah. with the seconds left in the game and then the final possession, DePaul, just they didn't even get past half court. You're kidding they, me. With- they that got much the ball time stolen. Left? Yeah. Oh. Wow. He got stolen. Pain. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, he just he and he. By the way, if you're wondering if I'm speaking out of school, no. Steve authorized that I could say it to the world. That that's a win's a win. I listen. I just yeah. told people so. Yeah. A win. A win is a win, and uh, is a win. The, the, so, the part that's interesting about what you said though is that everyone was rooting against. Everyone's rooting against. Him. And that we've said so many times is the. <laughs> listen, I've said it to Steve too. In his case, does he bring? part of it onto himself he does he even you know he he'd even <laughs> if he's here he admits that he does and i always say to him i go steve why are you you're a nice person in in, in private why do you got to be this brash guy in general on twitter he goes i know you're right i know you're right and then the second i turn the corner he's that back to doing it again like he's like a you know a child that can't help so. himself so he does bring some of it on himself but generally speaking like i don't get the whole thing where betters are rooting against each other i don't get it at all it doesn't make any sense not right. really, i don't know what it is in the dna of betters where like because they want to be right about future outcomes they got to disparage the guy next so it's not enough for them yeah. to be right they got to say i'm right and you're wrong it's really hard to bet where, where 50,000 will, will, you know, hurt me mentally, physically, emotionally, financially. Yeah. But to make a thousand doesn't really, a thousand's a good dinner. <laughs> like, 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 so I can't, right. I, 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 I almost can't justify it, but I understand why he does it. That's all. It, it's yeah. wild though. Like I'm yeah. looking at the board right now. Like I'm just going to use UConn as an example, like 26 to 26 and a half point favorite in that game against Stetson. Money line wise, I see any range from minus 7,500 to minus 20,000. Right. That's why I'm not saying a number because yeah. I don't know what he got it at. But so. that's a massive difference, obviously. Yeah, not, it, it seems much bigger than it is when you get to those numbers, but it, it's still a difference, for sure. Just so great uh, to be here. Uh, the morning of March Mad is a little more than an hour away. Steve Fezzik has texted me, y'all. Um, here are the uh, money lines he got for all the number one seeds, and he played them all. You ready for this? 
Mark these down. Okay. Kelly, you're going to put these in vcent.com slash picks? You're going <laughs> to log these in? Oh, uh, these, God. <laughs> she said, hey, bro, my tennis picks plus, plus 170 for physics. Like, all right, so here it is. Houston, uh, he's, got the, he's got the Cougars over Longwood. He's taking them uh, minus 2,500. These are his numbers. Okay. Uh, Carolina against Wagner. That's today. He's got them at minus 4,200. Sure. UConn. Uh, over Stetson, minus 4,200, and he's running it back with Purdue over Grambling, minus 4,500, which I believe is the exact number he had last year. Let's now, go, Steve. Here's the thing with Purdue, though. I mentioned this off air. Purdue, having lost to 16 seed Fairley Dickinson last year, if things get a little dicey, don't think that's not creeping into their heads at some point in this game. Like, if, if Grambling is, like, within two in the second half. Well, like, what, what if they're up in the first I'm half with, like, with like two minutes yeah. left before halftime? You're telling me those kids aren't thinking about that all half? Sphincter mania. <laughs> oh, Sphincter mania. <laughs> Some, something like that. So, anyway, those are Fezzik's numbers. Um, okay, you want to do our draft? Let's do a draft. Joe, yeah, you in this? It. All right. What, what, what are we doing? All right. We're bucks going each? to we uh, toss in $100 each in the pot. Okay. okay. We're going to each select four teams. See, Bill's already uninterested because we just did 100. Right? <laughs> no, I'm in. <laughs> I'm okay. in. I, I'm in. Do you want to raise I, the money? I, no, I, I, how's 10 a week sound? Yeah, 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going to take, uh, we'll go around, take four teams each. All right. Okay. Four teams each. Sure. This is just to win the title. To win the title. And then winner Whoever gets the advances pod. furthest wins the pot. Oh. Is it of us three? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Are, are we posting? Are we uh, posting up our money? I don't know. They can hold Ke- it. Kelly, yeah. you build credit system? What do you want to do here? I don't care. Yeah, no. I got, I got cash on me. Yeah. Right, we'll post it up. <laughs> no, no, no. It's right, fine. It no, no, no. I was you being funny. You don't trust Kelly? Is that what no, you're saying? No, no. I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. You guys are good. Oh, All right. Who gets the first pick? I have no idea. We didn't oh, yeah. decide in order. That? We didn't oh, yeah. decide in order. Larry, Larry, decide in order back there Larry and scream it in my ear. Larry, there we go. We really planned this well. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Larry. All right. We're going to go Bill Krakenberger first. Oh, wow. Oh. I Kill guess. second, me third. Oh, nice job, Larry. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right, Crack, you got first You got first pick. Well, I'm a mathematical guy. So a UConn. Okay. okay. Uh, I mean, that should be the first pick, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take uh, – I'm going to take – you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take Houston, number two. I was thinking of something else, but you I'm going to take Houston. You guys are good. This is where, where, where do I, this is my insert Matt Brown joke about taking the, uh, the teams at the top, because I always got ridiculed for this. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to go with the UConn upset in Auburn. Ooh. Oh, I was going to go take, with I Auburn. Was, I was thinking wow. about taking Auburn instead of Houston. I hate you. Okay. Have I mentioned that today? <laughs> <laughs> Have I told you that today? <laughs> Have I told you I hate you? <laughs> All right, we're snaking. You're, you're going again, Kelly. Oh, we're, just, we're snaking. Okay, I can't I'm going to go. You just uh, took Auburn. Are you writing these down? Yeah, I'm writing okay, them down. Good. Writing them down. Okay, I'm going Auburn and Tennessee. Oh, that was my other I pick. I hate you more. That was my other pick. Nice. It was. Darn it. Now I hate that I picked Houston because those were my next two. Ugh. Um. All right, I'm, I hate my next pick. I'm taking Arizona. Uh, boy, I guess you guys are going to leave me with Purdue. Purdue's open, right? Mm hmm. Uh, Enjoy. Purdue. Yeah, to get by today. Okay, North Carolina. Oh, he gets the snake. Right. So I got another one. Oh yeah. Yep. You're like not even next either. UNC. <laughs> Kelly just like picking, three picking away. teams. <laughs> Kelly's like, I'll take the entire West region. Uh-huh. Uh, let's go with UNC. Um. All right. I'm gonna take Kentucky. I hate my picks. This is the worst draft ever. Mike. Can we redraft? <laughs> Kelly ruined See, it. those are the two that I wanted, too. Okay, all right. Um, I got two here now, right? I got two here. That's how that works. <laughs> so, shut up, Kelly. <laughs> uh, Marquette. Marquette. I'm going to go with. And Illinois. Marquette and Illinois. You say that like you uh, are so confident. Yes. Uh, SEC and Big Ten, let's go, and Big East. All right, I guess I have to take, um, I have to go to my formula and all the uh, teams on the inside. You co- oh, by the way, we should repeat the formula here coming up one last time before it yeah. starts. Um, and the only team that's like on the outside looking that hasn't picked, I'll take Creighton. Okay. Creighton for Gill. Actually, no. Did you take two? Or? I, I'm no, done. you got one, one left, Bill, to finish, uh, finish yeah. it off. I got one left? Yep. Boy, okay. 
Let's go with a crazy one. Let's go with like Iowa State. Yeah. Right. There we go. There All right. To recap, Bill Krakenberger on UConn, Purdue, North Carolina, and Iowa State. Gil Alexander on Houston, Arizona, Kentucky, and Creighton. Oh, God. And myself on Auburn, Tennessee, Marquette, and Illinois. Can I bet on Kelly? I, I, yeah, I like I think, this better. I think he won the draft. Yeah. Kelly's like, the short I, shot. I, I, the, the shortest uh, shot I've got is started at 17 to oh, 1 in here. Okay. I just feel bad. <laughs> uh, I, when I picked Houston, I was like, should I take Auburn? And then you immediately go Auburn, Tennessee, which I'm yeah, really Auburn, Tennessee. By the way, about the formula, because mm. we've, we, we, again, we, the last update was on Monday, but for those who missed it, um, and maybe you haven't filled out your bracket yet, still uh, an hour away from tip off here with uh, Michigan State and Mississippi State. Uh, last 33 champs had more assistant turnovers. 31 of the last 33 had a head coach with Sweet 16 experience. 2014 UConn Huskies and last year's UConn Huskies with Dan Hurley. Uh, the only exception is Kevin Ollie in the 2014 UConn Huskies uh, bench. 27 of the last 28 champs went to the tournament with at least three wins versus teams in the top 10% of RPI. 2014 UConn Huskies. The Shabazz Napier-led Huskies, the exception there. Last 28 champs had a top 75 strength of schedule. And then the two that can adjust during the tournament itself are the Ken Palm numbers. 20 of the last 21 champs were in the top 20 and adjusted offensive efficiency. The only exception, once again, the 2014 UConn Huskies, who finished 39th in adjusted offensive efficiency that year. And then 20 of the last 21 champs were in the top 20 in adjusted defensive efficiency. That's defensive efficiency at Ken Palm. The only non-UConn exception in this whole thing, 2021 Baylor finished 22nd in adjusted defensive efficiency. Those are the those are the parameters. So now, who are the four teams that actually qualify in this year's March Madness? They are UConn, which Bill has, Houston, which I have, Arizona, which I have, Auburn, which Kelly has. The two teams on the outside looking in, Marquette, which Kelly has, mm-hmm. Purdue, which Bill has. The next tier beyond the two that are on the doorstep. Yeah. UNC, which Bill has. Tennessee, which Kelly has. Creighton, which I have. And Duke, which nobody has. Nobody picked Duke. I almost went Duke last. Duke's, yeah, me too. Duke has a coach picked that did, has not been to the Sweet 16 either, though, John Shire. I th- I thought, I'm glad Zach brought, brought them up yes. earlier because I've heard not a single person I am glad make a case br- for That's them. right. I'm glad he brought them up. We ha- we ha- and we're guilty of that. Have not mentioned them really once in any sort of championship context. I don't. It's been it's been interesting. I mean, uh, like uh, Bill, I ask you this. We talked about it earlier on the show. Have you feel like you've heard a lot of love for dogs in this first round? Because I, I I say this is the this is the first year I've heard of a lot of love for favorites. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Because uh, usually I'll have a lot of dogs. I like to bet in the first half. I bet three of them, but. Usually I'll have a lot more than that the first two days. Who'd you bet first half dogs? Uh, I bet first half dogs. I bet uh, South Dakota State plus nine and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that's against the Iowa State that I just picked, right? Uh, Moorhead first half. And I even threw a little peanut on McNeese first half. Okay. Because we talked about that. That's one of yeah. the uh, tried and true sort of March Madness round of 64 betting angles is dogs, but only dogs on the first half. Yeah. Let, let the favorites will manifest eventually, perhaps, if you played full game. So just play the dogs in the first half. And these lines, by the way, are still there. Are still there. This isn't like during right. the first week of November or something when the line. Yeah. These lines are still there. They're, they're, they're still there. Moorhead, McNeese, and what was the other one? Uh, to, against Iowa State. Against, the, against Dakota my State. pick with South, South Dakota, Dakota State. State today. And listen, I bet them. I, I didn't throw any significant money like I would throw first week of November. You know, whatever. You know, when yeah. the first week of of, uh, but, however, I do like them. I think the teams hang around with them a little bit more. These kids that are up, they pump they pump themselves up, I mean, for the games in the first half compared to um, the other team who just automatically thinks they're going to be there. And usually the strength will show by the second half. But sometimes these endorphins are pumped up. The kids are there first time on TV. And, you know, they, they uh, can hang around with them. In the, in the first half. That's I, my philosophy. I just, what Kelly brought up, I brought up at the beginning of the show, which is because I was doing it through the prism. I'm, I'm in a survivor pool. Yep. And, for, you know, you're incentivized for tiebreaker purposes to pick, uh, you know, upsets. The, the bigger the upset on the seating, the better in terms of your ultimate tiebreaker. Um, but when I'm going through it today... Um, you know, we, it's not like, again, it's not like, like Kelly does golf his way. I do tennis my way. We are very independent how we do this. With college hoops, I'm listening to everybody, every expert's opinion, all this stuff. Right. And there is no, just anecdotally, 
no consensus on any of these dogs. Like for everyone who takes one of these trendy dogs, whether it's McNeese, whether right. it's Sanford, whatever, there is an equally justifiable argument where like, yeah, but they not against this team. Yeah. And that was one of the things on the Megapod. And by the way, if you still haven't listened to it, there's still time with uh, Will Hill, Todd Wishnev and I, Will who had FAU in the final four uh, last year and Todd who had uh, uh, UConn beating San Diego State in the uh, finals last year. They both matched on a, final, on a long shot final four. But one of the things that came up, Todd kept bringing this up is, I hate the brackets this year because all of the teams that I was so excited to bet on or play in a bracket happened to end up against another team that I was super excited to play. And conversely, teams that he was excited to fade ended up more often than not against teams that he was so excited to fade. Interesting. So I do, there is a little voice in my head that wonders if this isn't the year where it's super quiet on the upset front. Let's see what happens. We shall see. Look at this crowd. We have, again, we do this show in the morning. I know it's different for Sharp Money in the afternoons because they always have people around. But for us, this is unbelievable. Yeah. It really is. And, of course, we expected it. And there's a line already that's 10 deep, people making bets. Um, At Bar Canada, we're on the uh, second floor here in a little corner of the D, downtown Las Vegas. Um, We get tweets. I haven't read any tweets today. What's wrong with me? We get tweets at BD the Book. By the way, March Madness now, 59 minutes away, the tip-off between Michigan State and Mississippi State. D- did Buddhist man just tell us he's waiting to sign up for the app, though? Like That, that, that was a fail. Come on, come on <laughs> man. we got to get this together. Waiting to sign up for the yeah, app. But what? Uh, <laughs> maybe you should have done that earlier, man. Uh, let's see. Remember uh, Ryan Hyatt, remember when you, speaking of silent producers, remember when you listen to uh, Crackman on VEASAN with Gil and Kelly, you're going to find what you love and love what you find. Oh, I see what he did there. With the, oh, was I supposed to? By the way, thank you for reminding me because we should also mention, we should also, we should also mention that with so many bottles to choose from, it's easy to find your favorite, all the lowest prices for over 30 years. Find what you love and love what you find at Total Wine and More. Drink responsibly. B21. See? Silent producer, Kelly. You got me to say it. Uh, Trip Tepper, we haven't seen this level of commitment from an athlete's uh, fall guy, talking about Otani and his interpreter, since Anderson did time for Barry Lamar Bonds. Hey, Trip, we'll have none of that. <laughs> Montreal Max. Sounds like Otani's interpreter, while uh, betting off the grid, needed to do our old uh, Tuesday at the Palm routine where you pass around envelopes at the table, squaring up your offshore outs with uh, one-stop shopping with the PNC reps and avoid bank wires. That was very detailed, Montreal Max. Wow. wow. Yeah, wow. Like that, that's, like, that's like a different language for most people, just to let you know. That's very – But very, it's, it's funny. The, it's almost like about, he was there. The Palm <laughs> used to be the joint. Um, back when I used to do my first radio show, Larry Grossman, you can bet on it, back in the late 90s, the Palm was where all the bookmakers and all the, guy, all the wise guys, the sharp guys would all get together, the Palm at the forum shops. And uh, I, I just, it went way downhill, by the way. I don't go there anymore. But, I mean, he's right. That was, that was the place there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Still a great concert venue and still a nice food court in a pinch. Oh, no, no, this is the Palm Steakhouse. The, the, oh, the Palm, I thought the you were about the Palm. Shops. Oh, you're talking about the Palm, the Palm Steakhouse. The, the, the Palm form, Restaurant, yeah. The love, Palm Restaurant, the right. The Palm, that's right. The right. Palm. By the I way, love that, this, this is one of my favorite Vegas things yeah. when it gets confused, it by does. the way. I'm like, yeah. the, it does. I was like, y'all, y'all did this at the Palm? <laughs> I, yeah. When I first moved down <laughs> no. here, ate at the Palm, and I had was meeting a friend who showed up at the Palms. And it was like, where are you right. at? They don't know, yeah. The, no, pa- that the this, Palm Restaurant is a D.C. political. I was just going to say, they started. Started in Washington, 19th and, Street, and they were my favorite steakhouse in the world. The Palm in D.C. I cannot tell you how many political deals went down there. Well, and all the yeah. poli- all the politicians' uh, f- faces on the wall. Yes, probably? correct. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Brian Johnson, morning, Gil. Any chance you could uh, share the tennis plays again? I was in the shower and could not write them down when I heard them. Well, Brian, first of all, you should be a subscriber so you can get it at visa.com slash picks. But okay, just this once. Uh, four dogs in tennis. All on the ladies' side. One has already started, by the way. Dion Paris has probably already started against Beatrice Haddad Maya, plus 137. The other three, besides Paris, that have not started, Yulia Putin-Seva, plus 174 against Ludmila Samsonova. Diana Schneider, I got her short plus money. She's short minus money against Madison Keys. I'd still play it. And Yue Yuan, plus 167 versus Maria Sakari. All on the ladies' side. I'm handicapping the men's side. I just don't like anything in these first couple days in Miami. Uh, this is from Phil Weiss. The all was lovely Phil Weiss. So where are those Fezzik numbers from? It's 10K, 10K, 20K, and 20K here in New York. You got a shot, baby. It's a bad bet at his numbers. Forget about it here. It's a bad bet at those numbers, without a doubt. With the numbers you're quoting, for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, no, no. You, you, you want to get, you know, 
45 to 50 to 1 is the most on Purdue. Um, I can't think I'm saying that, but yeah. So you, but, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's right. You can't lay those bad numbers. That's what with those uh, New York guys. You, got, you know, no way. Jack and the Prius 2.0. I hate your picks too, Gil, because they would have been mine too. Can't be good. <laughs> no, no, I know, man. I don't like it. Uh, okay, can you tell that story? Because we were just uh, before the break, we were talking about how um, I was saying like it feels there's a little voice in my head that keeps saying maybe this is the year where there actually aren't that many upsets. Could be completely wrong. Yeah. March Madness always produces some. Um, but we'll see how it, how it shakes out today and tomorrow. Um, but I was mentioning that for every person that has passionately spoken about a Samford or a McNeese State um, or, you know, pick your pick whatever dog that you like, or at least by seating, pick whatever dog that you like. Um, there's an equally passionate argument from people I respect on the Kansases and the yeah. Gonzagas of the world. You have a, a similar story. Believe it or not, I'm on, I'm on Kansas, though. So, I mean, I, I understand that. Um, uh, but let me just tell you. So, I'm in Atlantic City. I flew to Atlantic City just for three days. Left on Friday, came back on Sunday. And um, I, I went to go see Tony Orlando's one of his last shows, which was fantastic. I had some family come down from New York. Got them all in to see Tony. It was fantastic. Got to meet Joe Piscopo. Got to meet, you know, they, they were real happy. So, um, uh, by the way, real quick. You guys have to know this movie. I think you you have to know it. It's b- b- before Kelly was born. Do you remember Wise Guys with Joe Piscopo and Danny DeVito? It was made in Atlantic City. When Captain Lou Albano was in it. Captain it, Lou. Yeah, no, it was the, it was the, one of the greatest comedy movies. You have you heard of it? I, I, I've heard of it. I have not seen it oh, though. Bill. So you it was right, made yeah. in resorts in Atlantic City, and I was in resorts, and I'm telling Joe, does he run? He goes, oh my God, that's right. I made that movie here with, with, with Danny DeVito. What a great gambling movie. So a lot of good gambling parts. But anyway, so I'm um, there and uh, Boston is on Spanky's show at the time, mm-hmm. a podcast on uh, Selection Sunday. And he was giving out some stuff saying, so I'm, I'm at the DraftKings at Resorts in Atlantic City. And I was running up to the counter to bet. And um, they, they were there. No, they took they took a thousand, two thousand a game from me. I was actually happy at opening number. They're the only ones that had the line. It was, was was literally DraftKings and Fandle. That's it. So DraftKings had a five and a half. Fandle had a four and a half on James Madison. I went up and took the five and a half. Immediately went down to five, and it was of course five, four and a half. And there was some four and a halfs out there. Actually, um, some places opened up four. I'm looking at the opening lines now. However. Bounced right back. Wisconsin money came in, and I, I was talking to Howie Schwab, and he said, "Billy, I don't like that one. I like Wisconsin on that That's one." That's exactly what I'm talking about. So now I'm thinking to myself, you know, and I respect, you know, this, this is the Schwab. I respect him, and I didn't get off my bet, but I'm like, wow, this is bounced back to five and a half. Uh, it's five at DraftKings right now, but five and a half at most other shops. Yeah, there's you could make arguments with anybody. You could find someone well, to make an argument I, on both sides of any gonna, game. I was just going to say, not not that you can't find that if you search, you know, hard enough on any sporting event in anything ever. But I'm just talking about specifically with the round of 64 in March Madness. That I feel like, and again, this is just anecdotally from who we've had on the show, uh, the podcast that we did at Beating the Book, and just, you know, soaking in all the information, that this year specifically, for every, for every dog that is, is trending towards being this, you know, sexy dog that everybody has, it's immediately batted back by somebody I respect who's like, yeah, no, I don't see it that way at all. By someone you respect. That's yes, the scary someone part. you respect. Right. Yes. So, so Kansas has the injuries. Yeah, but you know what? That's not the team to beat them. Right. Um, right. That kind of thing. Uh, Bob gave a great uh, – he broke that down perfectly. He did perfect, that with Kansas, right? with Kansas and, and perfectly. I think there's been people question, right? Has that number swung too far because of the yep. I The McNeese Gonzaga one is probably the one I've heard the most. Right. But do you want to get in front of Gonzaga? I don't. No, I don't because yeah. because of what you guys just said. But like, it's people I respect that no. are mentioning Gonzaga. And and Todd yeah. and, and Todd and Will had a lot on the podcast where I was, you know, I, I don't know what they're going to say before the show starts, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, they're both going to go NC State here. Nope, they're both like Texas Tech, or you know, and there there are a lot of games like that. Even like the New Mexico Clemson game. Where, you know, everybody's all about New Mexico, they're favored, they're the 11, how could Clemson be the 6 if they're the dog, all that stuff. And Todd's like, I love Clemson. So for every yeah. one of those, yeah. right, there's someone, and the, and Todd watches more ba- college basketball than anybody I know, right? So, like, that's that's been the overriding theme for me this week. 
And and therefore, once again, if you missed it earlier, that's how I and Survivor. I couldn't take any of those ultimately, and I, I shoved with Colorado State on all my entries. Me, I do have a buy a rebuy on that. Let so me I, tell you that the yeah. sharper sports books too. If you look, I could just show you Gonzaga. The sharper sports books in far off places. You see Chris at minus seven, Pinnacle minus seven, minus ten. The sharper sports books do have they favor that. So that's it. It is. Yeah. This is looking at the Gonzaga game. I will look towards tip off. That game starts four twenty five Vegas time and see where they go, because I go by that closing line lots of times, especially early in the season. But even this first round, I like to see what they want. Now what that means is I want to see which way. Same thing with Circa here. I want to see what they want you to bet. So if yeah. they hang low hanging fruit, you know that they don't want that side. If they're minus seven, minus $1.15 on Gonzaga, and, and the best line in the world is on McNeese over here, I know that that's probably long term the wrong side. Long term. Drake and Wazoo was another one. I, I figured that everyone would be on Drake, Todd, Todd and maybe Will, but I know Todd for sure. I can't remember what Will said. He's like, no, Wazoo, we get tweets. That being the book. Jimmy Lopez, Whew, Bar Canada looks like it's filling up. It is buzzing over here. Brett at uh, B. Howell, B. Howell with uh, underscores in there. He goes, this is hands down the best day of the year. I've been pacing my house for hours, cooking snacks all morning. Cooking snacks, he says. And uh, four tennis plays to boot. Let's ride. Let's yeah, go, baby. Cooking snacks. What snacks are you cooking? I don't know. He says he's cooking snacks. Like he, nachos? He, he used that phrase. Do cooking you cook, snacks. Do you cook, I guess you cook nachos. That's a snack. Mr. Masterline. I just re-upped my subscription using ANG. There you go. We Kelly. got one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here for one more day at least. We're on the scoreboard, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Gibby, love listening to you. Headed to Vegas in June. If you could only pick one Italian place, would you pick Piero's, Capo's, or the Italian American Club? Oh, this Ooh. is right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, tee it up for Bill. Capo's is not even in my top 20. Wow. Oh, by the way. Um, Coming in at number 19. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's right. um, you know, I, I, I'm pretty friendly with the guys that own Piero's, but I'm also friendly with the guy that owns Italian American Club. But I have to pick the one I like better. And, the, and, you know, the better value and the better old school atmosphere, definitely the Italian American Club. Yeah. So uh, Piero's is great if you want to go to see where Casino was made and, you know, the, the movie Casino and, the, and the, the scenes where, you know, at the bar and stuff and um, – you know, the guy, the guy starts yelling. Remember, remember the guy starts yelling at what's, what's his Pesci's there, and he's saying, "Al, did you gamble the money? Did you gamble the money? I'll give you the money. Put the heat on. Did you gamble? <laughs> That's right at the bar there." And he said, and then the five guy says, "Yeah." He goes and he takes the money out of his pocket. He says, "Let me find out you f up here. I'll leave you where I see you." And he gives him the six hundred to put the electric, <laughs> the heat and the electric back on. That was right there. They rented out all of Piero's for like a, a week. Um, yeah, Freddie threw a giant number at him, and, and they paid. And Scorsese paid. First first wow. day I ever met Bill Krakenberger. True story. We went to Piero's. Oh, nice. Went to Piero's. You remember that? No. No. No recollection. He has no, no, no recollection. No, I have ADD. I don't know. He has no recollection. How many hours existed between when you got picked up he here? Where'd you get picked up again? No, at Golden Nugget. At Golden Nugget. When you got picked up at Golden Nugget and, and that dinner. Again, it's this. It's the. It's before the 2013 baseball season. I had a spectacular 2012 baseball season. I get a call on my phone. You don't know me, but I know you. It's Bill Krakenberger. I'm like, oh, what, what's happening? Crack's like, you're gonna fly out to Vegas. I'm gonna put you up at the Golden Nugget. Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna ask a girl named Rosemary for your room. Just oh tell him Bill Krakenberger sent it. That's her name. Rosemary. Yeah. yeah. Tell Bill Krakenberger sent you. He gets me a suite of it. That night, he comes in a SUV with guys named Jimmy and Vinny in his car. <laughs> I, I go by I instinct to story. go. Crack's driving. I go by instinct to the passenger seat. He goes, no, no, no. You're in the back. You're in the back. And, he, and I'm like, well, I don't know what's happening. And he took me to, they, we went to Piero. So it was a Pittsburgh Steelers Monday night football game. So I guess it was the fall after the 2012 baseball season. And, uh, and then uh, I was like, Bill had like 50 bets. And I'm like, do you even know what you're betting on? Bill's like, I have no idea. <laughs> and, then after, and then afterwards, so we're at Piero's. And afterwards, Bill says to me, he goes, now you're in my crew. And I was telling you're my him, gang. yeah, you're mm -hmm. my crew now. And then I told him the story on the air. I was like, in my head, or outwardly, I'm like, yes, I'm in your crew. And inwardly, I'm like, I don't want to be in your <laughs> crew. I don't know if I want that. <laughs> did, you, did, we, did we walk up to the office upstairs? No, we, oh, yes, at Piero's. That's so what I wanted to tell Piero's, is it with the, the, it's really, you want to tell it? Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. It's, the, the office up at Piero's is like the who's who. But this is before the mob museum was every, here. They have their human, own mob museum. Every VIP human of the that VIP. every walk. Ever the owner, walked in there. the owner of, of Piero's, who gives me full reign of the place, which is very nice. He let me walk Gil up there, and 
and, uh, and and show them around the office. You know, literally, there's pictures of everyone from the last 50, 60 years in Vegas. There was actually a pitch, picture of Fat Tony Salerno. That's his nickname. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, from jail, wishing Freddie a, a Merry Christmas. Um, and then there's pictures of him with everybody. So that literally, everybody. Tony Spilatro, all the different mayors. And, well, I shouldn't say, you know, it was just really the Goodmans. The Goodmans have been the mayors the last 20-some years. Um, but also uh, the who's who of back when Elvis and his manager and, uh, you know, Freddie was there when, when Elvis was signed at the International, which is now the Westgate. So it, just to see all these pictures and these photos and uh, there was things there literally um, from, from the, every single business owner back then, back when Vegas was a better place. I'll just, even though the mob guys were here, they, they, you know, it's just like they say in the movie, they know what you drank, who you were. You were treated like a, a big whale in a little pond. So it was just do, a, be, do a you good remember, place. Do you remember one of the, one of the pictures up there? Was? It said it was him with the owner. What's his name? The owner? Freddie. 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 Freddie, Freddie with, uh, and there was a picture of him, and it says, uh, look, Franco uh, Harris? Uh, th- you remember the story? Oh, my God, so I he goes, it. He goes, me with, he goes there's, and it says on it, he goes, me with Franco Harris. And I, who had just met him, like I have the nerve to speak of, and I go, uh, I think that's Mean Joe Green, not Franco Harris. And, and it was Mean Joe it Green. It was Mean Joe Green. It was, it was, I know it was Mean Joe Green. And, and he goes, he looks at me, he looks at the picture, he looks at me, he goes, eh. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> Later on, he told me, though, he goes, you know, tell your buddy. <laughs> tell your buddy. Tell your buddy there's a lot of holes in the desert and a lot of problems <laughs> solved in those holes. It's like, I think that's me, Joe Green. Yeah. He's like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, like like it was no big deal. That might have been you. you that could have been the enemy. You who are still trying to figure out whether or not you should have gotten in this car or not decided to decided to correct the man I on could, this. I couldn't keep my mouth shut. By the way, the, the mob museum's open now, and when you go into the mob museum, the first voice you hear is Freddie Glussman, owner of yeah. Piero's, like walking you around the place on, on an audio on an audio tour. And Gil wants to say, that's not you. What do you think? <laughs> and I think Gil used the word Freddy. This is Fugazi. No, I didn't no, he didn't. That would have been way better. <laughs> but we've also been to the Italian-American club together. Italian-American it's, it's club is great. fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, that was a long answer to your question. No. It's so great. The Italian-American yeah. club, I think they have probably one of the best veal parmesans anywhere in the world. And, you know, it's reasonable, too. I forgot I mean, about the question. Oh, it's yeah. so <laughs> no. it's, it's, I forgot what the question was. Yeah. Favorite oh, well, Italian yeah, restaurant. Yeah, it's a, it's a very reasonable place to go eat and, and get, get reservations at both places, by the way, um, because it's not easy to get into. So get, get your reservations. Little stage there. They still have guys on stage, bands on stage, music every night. Um, I love the Italian American Club. Cameron Martin, I thought I heard one of the VEASAN shows that no team west of the Mississippi has won the NCAA tournament since 1997. That is not true. Uh, what I like to say on this is that no team in the Pacific or Mountain time zones has won an NCAA championship since 1997. That would be Arizona, who won in overtime against Rick Pitino's Kentucky Wildcats back in 1997. But that is an amazing... Like, Arizona hasn't been in the Final Four since the earliest of the 2000s either. Like, it's been forever. Um, that's a lot of things. So that's, you know, one of the things we're going through the bracket tenants the other day. And again, shout out to Tom Federico, Jason Lisk over at Team Rankings. They do a great job of the four tenants of filling out your brackets. And we went through them the other day. Um, and I'll just briefly, in case you missed that, the four, in case you're in your last 30 <laughs> minutes before you put in your brackets here, because I know there's somebody out there. Is that, by the way, it is mayhem this here. This dude's at the screaming at Sigma Derby. Good oh, luck that, for your voice lasting, buddy. This guy's yelling at the Sigma Derby yeah. at 8.30 in the morning. Your voice is toast. Crack keeps looking up at the screen to see where the horses are I was are looking running. for horses. I swear yeah. I was. I didn't know. He's no. yelling at Sigma Derby. And he's got double-fisted Heinekens. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're so toast, much. bro. And this is here. Over under five and a half hours for your NCAA tournament look Thursday. At, and look at your guy to the left here. I want to whisper, you Buddhist, Buddhist man. Buddhist man. He's on line again. Buddhist man back in line. My kind of guy. He's got a <laughs> T-shirt with basketball on it, sweatpants, doesn't care. He's up there. It's his just, second time in line. I love this can guy. Can I tell you something about Buddhist man? Consistently funny on Consistently Twitter. funny Consistently on Twitter. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Consistently yeah. funny. He's By got way, the backpack. Real, right. real quick, though, and I won't get into the details, but again, though, the four were understand your scoring system, obviously, oh. if you're in traditional or upset rewarded pools, and the size of the pool is huge. Uh, assess risk and value, meaning what Bob was talking about earlier, know what everybody else is picking, go country. And the fourth one was avoid the golden rules. And one of the ones that uh, was just, just came up was, hey, no team from the Pacific or Mountain Time Zones has won since, you know, 1997. Remember, these quote-unquote golden rules are largely nonsense, right? So something like that is just something that randomly has happened. 
maybe you think there's some rhyme or reason to it, but generally speaking, Kelly gave the best example one the other day, this whole notion of 12s always beat fives. Just because a team lands on the 12 line, right, doesn't mean that there's anything magically special about that. And so, again, for those of us who are more about betting and betting against spread live betting or whatever and survivor pools, whatever, but this is, I guess, in contrast to people who just fill out brackets, people who fill out brackets, like I have buddies in D.C. that still care about this. They're like, oh, who are the 12s? Oh, we can't. Oh, yeah, I yeah. hate trends like that. It's the war, and so it, it means gets nothing. It gets proliferated, it and it's just none of it means anything. There's tons of those, which we, you know, which we went through a few of them on the uh, Megapod, because it's just like none of this matters to any of the other stuff we're talking about. So I hope people avoid those quote unquote as uh, as Jason Lisk used to call them, avoid the golden rules in quotes right, yeah. that everybody follows. Yeah, um, we'll wrap it up. One more segment. We are. What is exactly 30, <clears throat> pardon me, 35 minutes away from the official tip off of March Madness 2024 when Michigan State takes on Mississippi State. And let me just say a game that means a bunch to many of us around here. The March Madness about to start uh, 30 minutes away. Let me just uh, let me start with the mega with the megapod. Uh, Todd Wishnev, Will Hill and I did it. And I've I've kind of kept this quiet for those because I wanted people to listen to the Megapod, but now that we're so close to tip-off of March Madness, I'll go ahead and reveal sort of what the big reveal was on the podcast uh, in case you missed it, which is last year, um, the March Madness podcast is, is so well-received that I couldn't, can't thank folks enough for listening to it. Um, last year, Todd and Will were spectacular. Todd, again, as I mentioned, he had UConn to beat San Diego State in the finals. He also had Michigan State going far. He was just spot on with everything. And in fact, during the podcast itself, I said to him, you know, your, your, your picks are so different from the norm, you should be submitting these to a national contest. I said it to him more than once. And then as the tournament went on, Doug Wedge, one of our listeners who listened to that podcast, Doug Wedge is like, I just won $35,000 listening to your podcast. I finished second wow. nationally. And Todd, then all of a sudden, this horror came over him. He's like, oh, my God, could I have been first and won a million dollars? And thank God he only would have finished second. So he cost himself $35,000 as opposed to a million. By the way, while he was doing that, Will famously called FAU, Florida Atlantic, to get to the Final Four, which was an outlandish play at that time. And yet that happened as well. So we go into the podcast this year. Unbeknownst to, to each other, to them, uh, they hadn't spoken before that. They ended up with the same long shot Final Four pick. Do you know what that was? Oh, wow, no. What the very first game today, Mississippi State <laughs> wow. is playing Michigan State. They both came up with Mississippi State in their Final Fours. Wow. wow. Mississippi State in their Final Fours. That was the big thing. Um, and by the way, Todd also had in his Final Four... South Carolina. Wow. I, so, whew. there you go. Oh, I think Oregon, you know, they're going to give them trouble today. Todd wow. also says this. He goes, there's no question my bracket's going to suck because it was so good last year and I hate the way that they shook out this year. So, he just that's it. there's that disclaimer. Um, Survivor, for those of you who are playing in Survivor, I am going with Colorado State today once again. Um, I was tempted by all the others. In the end, uh, I like Colorado State over Texas. If I lose in the format that I'm in, there is a rebuy, so I'm still alive. Anybody who loses today will still be alive. You get one rebuy on any of your entries, maximum three entries. So I took, I shoved on Colorado State on all three. Do, do most do a rebuy, or, or, or is it like most, half and half? Most do a okay. rebuy. I think it's over 80% do a rebuy, and that's how the pool becomes bigger and bigger. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So if you have the option, that's yeah. usually a pretty good strategy. The survivor pool that I was in years ago, you'll appreciate this, that was shut down by the feds up and down the eastern seaboard, you could, you, there were no rebuys, but you could keep entering the first day up until the oh, final wow. tip-off. Wow. So it became yeah. like an eight, I mean, $800,000 sure. pool wow. at the time. That was many, many years ago. It was shut down. They haven't shut things down in Staten Island. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Is that right? Staten Island's got they're, they're the capital of uh, all these kind of pools and stuff. Yeah, the bars oh, it, it and was stuff. it was up there that it was formed somewhere in that yeah. region of the country. People yeah. people in the East Coast know exactly who I'm talking about. Him and him, you know right. what I mean. Um, your three first half plays once again were uh, Moorhead, uh, McNeese, and uh, South, South, Dakota yeah, State. South Dakota State. Look, I want to make you laugh. So Felica texts you and I yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Appreciate. 
You entertaining me as I sit off the side of the road across the border in mass. So he's burning so certain I can futures. Bet the tournament futures and final four round, uh, f- final, f- excuse me, final four round robins because I can't in Connecticut. Yeah. And he's a picture of his car yep. on the side of the road. I got to tell you something. I know those feelings, Chris. I was doing yeah. that here in Nevada, driving over to Arizona when I was able to bet on the apps before they threw me off the apps, all the sites. But that is just funny. Thinking of that, I forgot about that. The rules from state to state are ridiculous, some of them. Yeah. You can't bet this in Connecticut. You can't bet any team that's going to play against Connecticut. So, in other words, UConn, if UConn's involved in anything, a future pool, you can't bet it. That's the reason why. Um, that's how do they make these rules up? Come on, every yeah. every state has different rules, but that's like New Jersey. You can't bet New Jersey teams, but you could bet a, a futures pool. You can bet into. I'm 99% sure, but yet Connecticut, you cannot bet into any future pool because Connecticut's in that future pool. Let me go. Let me go back to your three picks again. First half picks, yep. not not full game, but this is again a tried and true betting tenant for the round of 64. Yep. Uh, Underdogs don't always manifest for a full game on the on you know against the spread, let alone sure. on the money line. Either one. So he's taking them first first half. McNeese, South Dakota State, and McNeese, South Dakota State, and Moorhead and Moorhead State. Yep. All Moorhead first State half. versus Illinois. By the way, Colorado State being my survivor play to date tomorrow. I don't don't hold me to this, but tomorrow I am leaning towards Utah State Ooh, okay. as my survivor play. So we'll see. Kelly, you have some college hoops plays as well? I got two uh, for today. BYU, uh, I laid that on the opener. I think that's, I laid seven and a half. What's that? Up I think to that's, ten now, yeah, last I saw. 10. Wow. What is it um, now? Let me check. That it's, was it's back to nine. Like, that was one just, I mean, you know me. I'm not the biggest college basketball player, but I feel like everybody was talking about that game as soon as it opened. So I was like, all right, let me try to get in on this now. BYU taking on Duquesne, by the way. Right. First time in the tournament for the... Uh, for Duquesne since 1977. Wow. Yeah, so in on them, uh, BYU side today in the Drake money line I played last night as well. Yeah. Oppo Will Hill. Oppo Will Hill. My, Let's go, Will. My futures plays again. The only ones that I have are from earlier in the year. Uh, BYU at 100 to 1 to win it all. Good luck to me. Alabama 60 to 1. Same thing. But I do like my final four plays. My final four plays, UConn at plus 180. Though UConn got scred in their region. Uh, we talked about how that was the big headline from Selection Sunday, besides the fact that Virginia got into it, was the fact that UConn, once again, for all the consensus that they are the number one team in the nation, and I think most people feel that way, the committee didn't do them any favors. And that looms over this tournament more than anything, I think, as we head into it, because in their bracket, they've got to face the four-seed Auburn Tigers if the favorites win out to that point. And that is the most brutal of seedings ever because, again, Auburn, to win the national title, is the sixth shortest shot. They are number four in Ken Baum, and they are a four-seed. They got placed with UConn. It's ridiculous. Not only that, but in terms of what other, like, top-ranked Ken Palm teams, UConn not only has number four-ranked Ken Palm in terms of, uh, number four-ranked Auburn in terms of Ken Palm, but also the 21st-ranked Ken Palm team in San Diego State in their region. 16th-seeded BYU, who we just mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, excuse me, 16th-ranked Ken Palm team, BYU. 10th Ken, uh, tenth-ranked Ken Palm team, the Fighting Illini. And the 5th-ranked Ken Palm team in Iowa State, all of them in their region, you contrast that with the Purdue's of the world, who's the third number one overall. They have fewer top-ranked Ken Palm teams in their region and not as good ranked. So, I mean, it's just an unbelievable thing. And I do have BYU 12-1 to 1 to make the Final Four. And as I said earlier, stranger things have happened Bill, with that. There are three females online. What a difference this sports betting thing <laughs> from years ago. God bless that them. Was I'm so re- happy for them. I, I saw you were so moved with my bets that you were noticing oh, this. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no. No, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, it's fantastic. It is. What, well, what is the madness. It, it, it's, it's the madness. It really is. But no, going back to your bets. I'm the, gonna, weather, I'm gonna, the weather, too. Let me ask you a question. So if the 100 to 1 shot or the 60 to 1 shot goes deep, yeah. is there any kind of hedging going on? Uh, let me, you know what? Let me worry Bad about that. Bad question. Man. Yeah. It, yeah. It, so it seems so outlandish to think that either Alabama or BYU is going to yeah. get deep. Uh, Alabama specifically. BYU, you never know. BYU, yeah. BYU is one of these teams yeah. that is all about three-point shooting. They know no other way to play the game of basketball. The coach admits as such. Pope uh, says the same thing. He's like, look. If we're way up, if we're way down, that's how we play. So they are prone to, if they're up, having runs against them at any point. And if they're down, they're never out of a game. 
but they're they're always injured. Khalifa, uh, well, their big man, who just appears to be perennial, uh, just out of shape chronic, uh, chronically. He's an injury candidate here. I'm not sure what his status is heading into the first game. Uh, questionable last I heard. So there's all kinds of things. But to answer your question, ultimately, I'm going to worry about it when it gets to that point. But yeah, th- I think in this case, there has to be a hedge. Okay. I just wonder. Yeah. yeah just Usually wonder. I'm not that way. Like tennis yeah, I'm not a hedge guy either. But, but 100 to 1, 60 to 1 getting deep. Yeah, you know. yeah for sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll lock in some profit. Um, final words, anyone? Nah. Are we excited? The greatest day of the of the sports betting oh, year. Oh yeah, what are the it's best. up there. Yeah. Wow, these next two days. Oh my God, it's fantastic. Where are you guys going, by the way? I'm going home. Oh, home. I'm going home today. Right. I'm going I'm home. home. All right. Yeah. Tomorrow I'll probably be down at Circa. I can't today. deal with today. the smoke. Oh, the smoke stuff. Good luck with all your bets, all your brackets. If you're in bracket pools, Survivor, whatever it is, whatever betting vehicle you're involved in. Good luck. We've done all we can do. Enjoy the madness. 